So we're here at Agile India 2017 with Andrew Koftiel. Uh, now, Andrew, we were just talking about how you're not typically a speaker at Agile conferences, mm -hmm. uh, but Naresh invited you here. So um, I guess, what, what brought you to Agile India? Yeah, well, um, Alan Cooper is uh, the namesake of the firm I work for. He's uh, known as the father of Visual Basic, and he's invited all the time to speak all around the world. Um, so he was actually headed to Mexico this week, um, and when Agile India reached out to him, that he recommended that I uh, kind of head to India to represent Cooper and, uh, and share a little bit about our work culture, which I oversee for the firm. Okay. And work culture is something we talk about a lot in the Agile community. Mm -hmm. um, you also have a background in design, mm -hmm. which has a lot of uh, relation to you know, what we do here. So mm -hmm. uh, what, what have you found? Um, so you've attended some talks now. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what stood out to you about uh, uh, what you've seen in the Agile space here? Yeah, um, well, I see that there's actually more overlap um, in terms of trying to deeply understand what the kind of user or customer uh, is looking for. Um, right. So it's kind of piqued my interest to learn more about Agile in general and to figure out how we can work more closely uh, between the two communities. Um, I've actually met a lot of really interesting designers, mm. uh, like Sandy from New Zealand, right. um, who, um, who've really kind of made me understand a little more about uh, the possibilities for how to work together. Yeah, and really, if you think about the Agile roots, it's, it was all about the customer exactly. originally. Exactly. So it, it, that, that's, that really is a great overlap. Mm -hmm. um, what are you excited for uh, coming up? Have you, have you looked at the talks? Yeah, well, I'm really excited. Uh, I've been working a lot with my colleague um, on his talk, uh, and he's really passionate about uh, conversational UI or voice UIs. Oh, interesting. And that being the next frontier in the okay. realm of design. So I'm really excited to see first, you know, how the talk um, goes and then also how people respond to it um, right. in India. Um, I think it's something that uh, is, is interesting, particularly because of um, the kind of cultural implications. I think up to this point, um, kind of voice UI has been really focused on American English or British English right. um, and kind of represents those cultures. Um, but there's a new frontier um, and opportunity to engage the one billion plus people in India. So yeah, I'm absolutely. excited to kind of spark that, that conversation here. Awesome. Uh, something you and I were uh, talking about before related to work culture is the role of kind of introverts and extroverts. Yeah. Uh, where do you fall in that? I, 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 sus I suspect yeah. I know the answer, but. yeah. Like I was about to dive in, and I think that reflects <laughs> it. I'm an extreme extrovert on every Myers Briggs um, self test. I'm always like a hundred percent extrovert. Right. But the the thing is that most of my closest friends and the people I relate to the most are introverts, um, and I actually think that um, it's quite complementary for the two uh, types of people to kind of work together. Right. Um, and uh, and yeah. So I also think introverts make amazing design researchers uh, because they're great listeners. Right. Um, and they're actually um, people that are authentic and uh, easy to relate to. So yes. I think it's exciting kind of the work that you're doing to kind of bring light to introversion in the workplace and to uh, kind of add value uh, to it. I, th I think you brought up a really interesting point about the importance of diversity on teams. Mm -hmm. and. It, it, it can be challenging to work sometimes with people who are very different from you and have di very different needs than you. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess maybe in your experience, what's helped bridge that gap when you've been working with people who have maybe very different tendencies or personalities? Yeah. So that's actually like the core of Cooper's approach is uh, we call it pair design. Um, and I think it really is borrowed from pair development. Right. Um, and so we have two flavors of designers on every project. Uh, one is uh, called a generator. Okay. And they're generally the more expansive, visionary, big thinking kind of person. They're the outside of the box thinker. And they're paired with a synthesizer. And the synthesizer is the more methodical, um, you know, more the type of person that wants to make it real, kind of figure out what the constraints are. Right, you're combining the divergent and convergent thinking. Exactly. Awesome. And um, at Cooper, uh, Alan and Sue, our founders, really represent those two archetypes really well. Um, and that's actually how the company was built. So for us, we actually really embrace those two ways of thinking. Uh, they lead to essentially constructive conflict, right. which I think really allows us to deliver uh, for our clients in a kind of holistic and really thought through way. Um, so I, 
I really enjoy working with synthesizers uh, as a generator, yeah. uh, and uh, and I feel like it allows for a lot of um, my ideas that tend to be quite creative to actually be made real. Yes. Awesome. Well, I think uh, you and I could talk all day, but thanks yes. for chatting with me. Thank you. And uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Likewise. Awesome.